Welcome back to Just Like You and Me on the road. We are out here on the Damascus campus for a greenhouse retreat. We have Matthew Schechter here with us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Matthew, it's great to have you. Great to be here. Thanks for having me, Mike. Yeah, no, I appreciate you taking the time out of this <coughs> on this retreat to come and, and be on our little podcast. So a lot of people know you from St. Hilary's Youth Ministry. My siblings rave, rave about you and how what you're able to do there. We now you know you're we're, you're over at Greenhouse, but I know you had a, like a, a lot of formation, a lot of time in the youth ministry space. So I wanted to touch on that a little bit. So like, where did you start in the youth ministry? Um, I think. I started in youth ministry by being a teen myself, firstly. I was, like, um, brought up in youth ministry around Columbus a lot, and it was a very, um, I think I would say that it was, like, both something that I enjoyed, but also something that I didn't really identify with a lot, which probably is most people. Um, but... The amount of seeds that were sown uh, into me from youth ministry, from my time being a, in a, as a teenager in youth ministry things, like Catholic Youth Summer Camp was something I did all the time, like almost every summer for like six summers growing up. So I just like realized when I had a conversion how much um, what had been given to me and I wanted to give back. So that conversion process that happened in college or a reconversion I guess is what people would call it is um was a big catalyst for me getting back into youth ministry but basically once I had that conversion I was doing stuff with teens like the whole time so I helped at a parish immediately after in Columbus uh, and I was running a an eighth or in seventh grade confirmation class um, with one other dude and we both had no idea what we were doing <laughs> and we got making jokes that we were just gonna have the kids experience heaven and hell by like creating rooms and then having like people dress up as demons or angels and just like scare or like sing to them <laughs> and that would have been the extent of what they needed to experience for that one given day because we were just like so fed up with how bored middle schoolers were with <laughs> But it was like um, a really beautiful time where me and a brother really just got to dive into the hearts of some middle schoolers. And then after that, I was a missionary with Damascus Catholic Mission Campus over here in Santa Barbara, Ohio for three summers and two full years. Um, and I grew in a lot of love a lot of intercession, a lot of just um, breaking for the hearts of kids and in general just the hearts of Americans. Um, and they equip people really very effectively um, in this ministry here and how to minister to young people. So uh, I think like one of the prime jobs that people can have when they leave this place is a youth minister. So I just applied for a couple of places after. Um, I got married after leaving here, and I got a spot up at St. Hilary up in Akron, Ohio, um, and that's where I served for a couple years, two years, I think, basically, before moving on to Greenhouse. That's awesome, because youth ministry is, is so important, because we always talk about like the, the high school year is so formative. Mm -hmm. It's you are, go from eighth grade where you're a little bit like kind of sheltered, and then to high school where it's just more a conglomeration of everybody. And it's really important to, as you're growing, to also be growing in faith. The like the Bible verse for this retreat is what is John or Luke six, right? Whoever listens to me builds their foundation on on God, and that's really what youth ministry is all about: is sending that that good foundation. Mm -hmm. Which the more I'm like reflecting on that over this weekend, it's been really really awesome. And like what we're trying to do here is getting back to our roots and setting that foundation off. And so. We've talked about Damascus a little bit on this on this podcast, but if you could expand a little bit or give your reflection on what Damascus is and like how it's helping our the youth and the young adults as we're here today. Mm. Damascus, you're asking? Yeah, about? just Damascus. <clears throat> Damascus is people are just really hungry for God who are part of Damascus. Um, they tend to attract the Catholics that 
recognize that um, that recognize that transformation is possible, um, not just for kids but also themselves and adults. Um, that's kind of like the motto that they use here, that um, they just want to bring the kingdom of God to whoever they come into contact with, essentially. Um, I think that is honestly a really cohesive and holistic way of how we should approach the gospel anyways. It shouldn't just be, I minister to middle schoolers, I minister to high schoolers, so that's the only people that I'm going to to speak to that to speak to about Jesus and um, so uh, I think in general because they have that heart for the compassion that God has for his people that that's why it funnels so well to anyone and specifically middle schoolers high schoolers young adults but um, I mean Damascus ministers specifically through retreats and they minister through uh, evangelizing on the streets they minister through um people like renting their place on campus and then just being a witness and that kind of stuff like so you've seen a little bit of that um but the, i think a lot of the lives are really just transformed because that it's like that quote that um saint francis of assisi says that sanctify yourself and you will sanctify society and i think that's just a lot of times we look at society and say what's wrong with it but he is the type of man and um, a lot of missionaries here are the type of people that would just say um, that I'm the one that the Lord wants to purify so that others will be purified mm -hmm. essentially um, and so they don't come at conversion and evangelization from an angle of hatred but a, from an angle of compassion which I think is a big uh, it, that's how lives get transformed um, let me know if I'm missing anything. No, I think that's 100% <clears throat> right, which I think is really cool because something that's been on my heart for the last couple months is talk to people who have converted to the faith mm -hmm. and how like their process went. It wasn't because someone came and yelled at them saying, hey, you're going to hell, fix right. your life. It's just loving them, meeting them where they are. And if you meet any person from Damascus, someone who works there now or worked there years ago, they have that love for Christ and in turn that love for you and it, you can feel it when I first met you I was like whoa this guy's awesome like he's just you like you saw me it's which is it's it's weird like you can see me but you saw me mm -hmm. and you really have that here and it's 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 tangible you can, it's mm. palpable you can really feel it and that's why like I've just this is the first time ever being here at Damascus and I can't wait to come I'm trying to come to an outpouring mm -hmm. here in a couple of weeks just mm -hmm. to truly full, more fully experienced Damascus because like I, obviously I can't go to the youth summer camps so I'm no longer at youth unfortunately yeah. at heart maybe but it's really really <laughs> cool but so and then now you're working for Greenhouse which Greenhouse is more catered to the young adults that next level I think it's funny you went from the youth youth group to the, the yeah. doing that now you're catering to young adults so Greenhouse I know started from you're, you're one of the founders and then Chris Finneman mm -hmm. so where did that where did that idea come from and Ooh. and how is it kind of like going today yeah i'm really passionate about this one so good question um so in acts of the apostles um there's a specific structure of a way of life that's laid out that i am passionate to see lived out in the church um and that is a type of community that commits to life to one another um that lives together that worships daily together whatever that form takes it's just worship it's just sacrificing it's laying your life down together as a community for the glory of the gospel and then um it is seeing signs and wonders happen in the midst of you because of your yeses and then the last thing among others that they mention is that numbers are added to them daily which we could say is true of the church right now and i can say that too but i want to see more of it essentially i want to see that lived out more fully um so our mission with greenhouse was formed on the basis that uh that the early church had a template for what full the fullness of life can look like um and so we really want to see what happens when we just try to put that into practice with young adults who tend to be the most hungry of people because they 
have the most availability. That's not the only reason why I think that's one of the main ones. This be, their availability allows them to be able to say yes to great things. Um, that sometimes is harder for married couples. It's harder for people who have already laid down their lives and vocations to be able to give a, a grander yes to a grander proposition. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, we we have this huge um, passion to see a revival happen specifically in Cincinnati, but also just in America. And that's going to happen through relationships. It's going to happen through a, a Catholic who has the humility to approach another Catholic and say, um, I don't have, I'm not perfect, but I know the perfect one. And to really give them an opportunity to encounter that person, because I think that's what changed my life is in meeting a group of people that chase after God with everything they had, even though they were imperfect. Um, so the that's kind of the wide-ranging vision. The more practical side of it is that we have houses for men and women in Cincinnati right now, at least, and we might expand soon to other cities um, for young adults outside of college. And we just walk with them in how to encounter Jesus in a daily basis, how to evangelize their workforces and just in general the world, and then how to lay down their lives for the vocations. Um, when they or just discern the calls that are on their lives basically mm. uh, we invite them to come and experience what relationship can do because uh, this is what I was trying to get is that I don't think the world can offer real relationship I think that's something that only Christians can because uh, if you are serving some other God then that God is going to inhibit you from loving but our God is the only God of love. Our God is the only God that truly knows how to be other centered, other focused. And so when we serve the God of love, the Christian God, then that God is the only God who truly loves and is in relationship with us and allows us and teaches us how to be in relationship with others. So I really believe that's something the church can put forward better than anything else. And that's what we as Greenhouse vow to put forward is that we want to love people unlike any other people love. Um, so our four pillars are hunger, honor, hospitality, and humility. And uh, we are hungry for God together as people. We honor one another because we recognize the sanctity of uh, God's dignity that he puts inside of each human life. Um, we are humble in the fact that humility wins us um, heaven on earth but not that for ourselves humility is just what jesus who jesus is essentially that jesus is um two attributes that he uses to describe himself are meekness and humble of meek and humble of heart we say a lot of other things about jesus but those are the only two things that he describes himself with and then the last thing is hospitality hospitality is very simply put it's the gospel put into action it's really welcoming people with the heart of christ saint benedict's rule says to welcome the stranger as Christ. And I think that is one of the greatest witnesses I've ever seen is when someone random um, gets welcomed in like they are part of the family. Um, and that's what everyone really wants at the end of the day. So those are our, our cultures. Those are our values. That's kind of the of the practicals of what we do. Mm. So Yeah, that's awesome. Because yeah. there's a lot of great things you said there. And one that always sticks out to me is like imperfect people going to the perfect like knowing the perfect God yeah. and helping you get there. And a lot of people will get hung up on the word perfect and trying to be perfect because we all want to be the best versions of ourselves, but that version only will live in heaven. Because mm -hmm. as we're on this earth, we're continually trying to get better so we can get to that perfect thing. But it's awesome that you guys recognize that. Like you're not perfect. Right. You are going to fail, but we are going to love you and bring you to that perfect person. That's super cool and super humbling to see. And like building young adult community right now is huge. Mm -hmm. Everyone I've been talking to is talking about how like, oh, they're, they're looking for community. Are they, now they've just found community being Greenhouse or Veni Vidi Vici. Those types of groups where we can just kind of come together and you're not judged, you are loved. You can open up about a problem or as Chris was, Chris was saying, if you don't have any problems right now, you can be a gift for somebody in just listening 
And that's really cool what you guys are trying to do and grow. And it's such a needed thing in this society. Mm. We always talk on the podcast about how social media just pulls everyone away and makes you an individual. Mm -hmm. Your For You page is catered to you and your, your, your wants and needs. And it takes away from the community. You, you know, you're not listening to other people, you're just consuming what you want to be consuming. And what you guys are doing is the antithesis of that. It's like, especially being out here, we can't really be on our phones, we don't have service, and that forces us to be together. Right. Like play cards, talk with you one another. It's a crazy thing, we're talking to each other, <laughs> we're listening, we're growing. And that, that's, that's beautiful. And so you said you have, you have a house for men right now, and I think another house for women coming in the future. Mm -hmm. Is that for people just graduating college or graduating college and they just kind of want a place to live with in that community? Or to be in that house, do you have to be a part of your ministry? It's really um, anyone outside of college who desires more in their relationship with Jesus. Um, we don't, there are a lot of motivations for wanting to be a part of the house that are good and are worthy causes for it. So we just ask, we just want people who are hungry for more who and who want more in their um that's one and the same but yeah the people who want more in their relationship with god and specifically are in the catholic church yeah and so you we get you gave a talk uh you gave two talks today and that's kind of the third one if you want to count it that you talked about um like being men and doing what is right like being we have the capacity to be a like a gift for someone like I said kind of earlier before and men have we've been like masculinity the term like toxic man, masculinity it's what we're doing how we are is just bad in general but can you talk a little bit about how important being a spiritual man and being a like, true man is in the Catholic Church and how you can really be a pillar for your family and kind of community and in, in your in your fellow man you're basically asking like, what does it mean to be a man for the yeah. Lord? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think being a man for the Lord is firstly about Jesus. Um, you can't be a man unless you know the man, like we're talking about. Uh, and that's like a silly phrase, but um, there is nothing like that phrase. Uh, John fourteen fourteen. there's no greater love than this than for one to lay down his life for his friends. That is the love that a man has, um, that a true man has. Uh, and men have a specific capacity to give. Women have that too, but men are built to give more because uh, we are called to lead through service. Um, that's just the way that our biology shows is that we are called to give, we're called to initiate, we're called to sacrifice ourselves. And um, I could go more into that, but I'm not going to. But basically, at the end of the day, once we encounter the man who gives without counting the cost, then that's what we were. Then that's the only impetus, the only uh, motivation that can truly release us into being men. I don't I actually don't think that manhood is earned, like a lot of people have said it in the past, like that you have to go through rites of passage to prove that now it's time to move from boyhood to manhood. I think it's bestowed. I think manhood is something that a father can give to his son um, at any age, honestly, that a, the father can decide that it is time for you to step into. And that's actually what Mary did with Jesus. Even though she wasn't his father, she specifically had a role of bringing out his manhood by bestowing it on him. Um, and if we, take all those things and synthesize them at the end of the day we have a man who will lay down his life for his brothers um and in his community and he initiates because he recognizes that as due to his dignity of being a man that he has some capacity and authority to lead is what i mean to say mm -hmm. um it's not because we are better than women it is just because of the fact of who we are like I don't know like it, it's almost like when I've seen men step up that it's things fall into places they're supposed to be mm -hmm. and it's not that when women step up 
that it doesn't do that for me. It's just from the fact that things fall into right place when men um, choose to be a leader and it's otherwise men being lazy at the end of the day. Um, because women have so many other things to tend to um, if, if they're stepping into their vocations and different calls. So uh, I think it can be a touchy subject, but when I see it lived out specifically in my marriage, um, I see a wife who um, nurtures and cares for our children in such a particular way that I can't and gives herself in ways that I can't with her body. And then when I'm called to give, I'm called to lead by taking a step beyond that into the wider scope of what our family looks like beyond just the kids um, and how I can give a wider scope but then also step into when it's necessary like Jesus steps in at the appropriate time and actually does things um, that's what I'm called to do in my family as well is to step in when when not just when Katie's struggling but also when she's struggling and like help um, remediate situations and um, to bring the love of the Father into those moments and reinstill what the values and the standards that we're aiming for is. Um, yeah, I think those are some of my thoughts at the top of my head. No, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's, it's really beautiful. And a lot of a lot of young men don't know where to start when it comes to like being right. a man. And unfortunately, it's some, there's a lot of times where like they don't might not have a man in life. What's like a quick thing that men can do right away to try to get on that path of true like Catholic masculinity? It's like, a, like can talk about like setting certain times for prayer or mm -hmm. just taking that extra effort. Is there any advice you'd give to a young man who wants to be that spiritual Catholic man? Yeah, I mean that's probably one of the great ones, Mike. Right there is, mm -hmm. um, is to let yourself be fathered by the heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. uh, so to spend time in prayer and just say, "Father me, God," and to really like allow yourself to come to Him. We were talking about that today and how. You can't hear God and you can't be changed by him unless you come to him with your, and that means like bringing yourself, your needs, um, bringing your brokenness and your honesty to him. Men, and that would be my second thing if I'm, I'm tacking on, but the tacking on is if we can't be honest, then there's nothing to do about our lives. There's nothing that can be changed. Um, so the honesty about that we're not where we need to be, that we're, we're, that we're not where we want to be, that honesty is absolutely critical. So honestly, just taking a first glance in prayer at ourselves and being like, okay, I actually recognize that I'm not, what's the phrase? I'm not sliced bread or <laughs> whatever the phrase is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have my fact checker with us. Yeah. So <laughs> but, um, yeah, not that I'm, that I'm not all that I've been cut out to be and then asking God to lead me and doing that daily is the best thing. Mm. So, and then the other thing would be to just ask anyone that you know in your life, if there's gotta be someone who you see has a type of fatherhood and asking that person to lead you is critical. Yeah, and you mentioned the word humble and yeah. it's being humble in that. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you have to be humble when you say, okay, I am not perfect and right. I have faults. How can someone help me? And like Catholic, we have the ability to go to confession and have that spiritual fatherhood there. But I know we're coming close to time with our cameras are going to run out. But we like our guests to leave kind of a, a final thought, almost called called an action type mm -hmm. thing. What's the one thing you want to leave with the many followers of the Just Like You and Me podcast? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that time for prayer is probably what the Lord may be asking. But I, I think even more the Lord may be asking us again to give him what he gave us like to and what i mean by that is essentially to give your life again to him um because if we don't again come underneath his kingship and authority then we will never be able to experience the fruits of the gospel or to walk in his way walk in the narrow way um or to yeah experience resurrection life that all comes Firstly, when we surrender. So I think my call to action is that we can say a quick prayer right now. Let's let's pray a prayer together and actually give our lives over to him because it is never not the time to do it. And it's always a time to redo it if we've um, done it. So let's do that in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we ask you to come father us. 
we've seen brokenness around us. We've seen brokenness in our own lives. And I'm the first to admit, Jesus, that um, I fall short daily, that today I've um, been unfaithful to my commitments, that I have failed in my relationships, especially the ones most dear to me. And I just beg your mercy, Lord Jesus. So I'll just lead us through a prayer of commitment to Jesus. So I just invite everyone who's listening and everyone here too, uh, um, Mike and Ken, just to again give our lives to Jesus and just repeat after me. Mm-hmm. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, Father, I thank you for the gift of my life. I thank you for the gift of my life. And I'm sorry for the ways I've misused it. And I'm sorry for the ways I've misused it. I thank you for the fullness that you're offering me. I thank you for the fullness that you're offering me. Through your body and your blood shed for me. Through your body and your blood shed for me. I hand my life over to you. I hand my life over to you. I give you my everything. I give you my everything. Thank you for giving me your everything. Thank you for giving me your everything. I'm yours. I am yours. And you are mine. And you are mine. Amen. 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 The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much, Matthew. Yeah. So where can people find uh, information about Greenhouse? On our Instagram page, it's greenhouse.hq. That's the big one. And then on our website is greenhousecincinnati.com. Those are the big two. Yeah, beautiful. We'll link that in the description. And thank you for taking the time out and during our free time to be on our podcast. So we appreciate that. And this has been Just Like You and Me uh, podcast on the road. Thank you so much. Woo! <laughs>